Kind of the question on the AS enthalpy changes topic. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so the first part, we've got a calorimetry experiment where we've got to find the enthalpy change of combustion of alcohol J that's in that spirit burner. So from the information, the M is 180 grams. Obviously, that's the mass of water in the beaker, not the mass of fuel burnt. C is the specific heat capacity of the water, and delta T is the difference in those two temperatures. So the first thing we do is calculate the energy transferred to the water from the reaction, so MC delta T. So we get that many joules, which is that many kilojoules. So we've got to give our final answer in kilojoules per mole. Next thing we do is work out how many moles of alcohol J has actually burnt. So it's mass over MR, 0.0175. And then to convert that to a delta H and enthalpy change of combustion, it's the Q value in kilojoules divided by the moles. So it's minus because it's exothermic, 2257.2 is the calculator value, but we've got to give it to three significant figures. So it's minus 2260. Next part, we've got to come up with reasons why the experimental value for the enthalpy change of combustion is different from the data book value. I've just copied the diagram of the apparatus again. So apart from heat loss, that's a bit too obvious, so we can't go for that one. So I've gone for four answers. You only have to give two. So the first one I've gone for is the evaporation of the water or the evaporation of the fuel from the hot wick. Next one is the specific heat capacity of the apparatus has been totally ignored. So obviously some of the heat from the reaction is heating up the beaker. Likewise, some of the heat from the reaction is heating up the thermometer. But we've totally ignored that and assumed that all the heat from the reaction has gone into the water. Another thing you could say is the fuel undergoes incomplete combustion. And the other thing I've said is non-standard conditions in the lab. So obviously the lab may well not have been at 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals of pressure. And obviously that's going to affect the value. Part B now. So the equation that represents the standard enthalpy change of formation of liquid alcohol J. So we've got to form one mole of the alcohol from its constituent elements. So it's going to be five moles of carbon solid, six moles of hydrogen gas, and half a mole of oxygen gas. And just make sure that your state symbols are nice and clear. So if the examiner can't sort of work out whether you're saying solid or gas, they often look very similar. Obviously, if the examiner's in any doubt, it won't give you that mark. So just make sure your state symbols are nice and clear. So for the final part of the question, we've got to calculate the um, enthalpy change of combustion of alcohol J using enthalpy changes of formation. So you'll see I've highlighted the little F there just to make this point. When you're calculating an enthalpy change for a reaction, this one just happens to be combustion, if you're using delta H F values, enthalpy changes of formation, the enthalpy change for the reaction is the sum of the enthalpy change of formation of the products minus the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the reactants. Whereas if you're using combustion values to calculate length of change, it's the other way around. So it would be reactants minus products. So we'll put the numbers in. We've got five moles of CO2 in the equation. This value is just for one mole. So we multiply by five. Add that to six times the water formation value and then subtract from that the end of change of formation of the um, alcohol. We don't need a value for the oxygen because it's an element. Its enthalpy change of formation is zero. So the final answer comes out at minus 3320 kilojoules per mole.